Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Monday, August 1st, 2022. Basically a slow and low volume day for the S&P today. Although the market did manage to eke out a little bit of a new high uh, coming in at 41.49, whereas Friday's was 41.44. So as over in the NASDAQ, eked out a little bit of a new high and then went from doing that to moving to the session lows, which was just below 4,100. And it got back down to 4,097 before again beginning to drift up and finish midway to the points. Now, what does that do for the counts? Basically, absolutely nothing. So we remain in what I'm still considering an, a C wave. Now, if I'm going to consider that this is the bottom of wave four, right? We're in wave C. One, two, three, four. And we still have that fifth to do. I honestly don't believe that today's activity pushed hard enough or far enough to complete a fifth wave. But we will take a closer look now. Let me open it up on the four hour chart. And we can see that that light is very much not likely. And actually the high was 41.47. So excuse me, it was even less than uh, 49. Now, so what could we be doing if we're in one, two, three, four? Then we got one, two, three, four, five. I, mean, I would think that'd be over, but then we had an ABC and then we're starting back up again. So either it is all done and we just turn around and we start to fall. Market's not giving any hint that that is going to be the case. In fact, JP Morgan decided to put out a story basically saying that a JP Morgan quant guy, computer guy, a, a algorithmic coder or somebody who works with algorithms, basically came out and said, hey, I, I called for the summer rally. And now I'm saying that uh, stocks could continue to go up even if bad earnings are on the horizon out there are on the you know in the future i thought that was pretty cool it's like yeah you can program any computer you can make an algorithm that will take any situation and create a bullish picture from it so i found that kind of interesting let's see what it would do uh but i just found it interesting that it's coming from jp morgan so I also believe that there was some, but there's still somebody out there who needs to get out of stuff and they need it even higher now. I'm not sure why. And every time you think, okay, maybe you reach that level, maybe you reach that level, but it doesn't seem to complete. So I get pushed to the next. Now, under an Elliott view here, we still remain within a C wave. Now, I want to consider if that we're, if we're in one, two, three, four, five, instead of it could be one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five of three, and then we get another four and another five. Could, could, could. But I'm gonna take it a little bit differently and say that this is the three and this is the four. So I wanna measure out what we could have as potential for this fifth wave, if indeed this is what's going on here. It's gonna come in pretty big. Now, what I wanna do is go down to the hourly chart and just clean all this up to make sure that I'm being as active as I can in terms of where all of this stuff begins. Like it started at 39.13, and we have a little bit to put off of that, 39.13, and then it ran up to, oh, come on, tell me what that high is. Four, oh, give me a break, guys. Up to the high at, 41.44, and here I have it at 48.55, not going to work, 44, and then it came back down to 4,097, no 68. Okay, so let's put that into place, and now we have our fibs done right, and go back out to that four-hour chart, and let's talk about what we're coming up with here. So again, if if I'm believing that we're within that fifth wave, five of C, 
and we should be close to capping this C wave and beginning to turn and start to head lower. I'm also of the opinion because there is now a swarming atmosphere of bullishness. We're going up, we're going up, we're going up. Does it make any difference what interest rate do? Does it make any difference whatever? And that really leans toward it being a B wave, a larger B wave which does then coincide with this being the completion point for intermediate degree, the intermediate degree C wave and the primary A wave being here and this then being in a primary B wave. Now, if that's the case, I don't necessarily see that this is turning into a diagonal. Others may argue that point, but I basically Think that that got broken when this B wave came in here. It can be a fifth wave and a C wave up, but then it likely would be an intermediate wave A of primary B. So again, no matter where we end up, I am looking for another turn down. And it's just going to be, if we end up that this is a B wave, it's not going to go to a new low right now. That'll be the difference, okay? So I am expecting a, a little bit of a near-term high here. You get a top going in there, and then we begin to drop. Now, because I'm running two counts really next to each other, both still have, even if it gets up to here, up into this zone, up into this zone, it still can be a minor wave two, and it still can be a an intermediate wave A. So both of those are going to run together is what happens after that will make the difference. Okay, so let's take a look. Now that's off the daily. I wanna bring this down to the four hour chart and, and tell everybody, thank you very much. And then see if I can't get this open. And there we have it. So A, B, and then we get the rest of it coming in here. Now, again, this went up, made a new high. We still might have a wave four. Maybe that wave four gets down to the 20. And that would be the four hour 20. I kind of come over here and take a quick peek at the one hour chart. We're looking at, we've got, there it is. And then we've got, what is this? An A, a B, and then we're going to do a C. So that then completes maybe this five waves or three of C. And now we're doing the four of C. And we can get, again, back down to the 50 EMA, which is at 41.02, we have the support of the previous low here at 4,097. That's the previous fourth, right within this little five. And then if it breaks there, we kind of open things up a little bit. And now we'd be looking at 4,081-ish. So even on the hourly chart, I'm thinking that we this should all be contained at a higher level if the intent is that we continue to move up. All right, so 4,081, that works. That's the four hour 20. And it also coincides with a, a previous, even a, another fourth wave at 4079. So that would be that zone. So we got plenty of support coming on. Uh, they're not moving it too fast still. So exactly, it is still summer time trading. And so it gets slow, people are away. Now, Going to the upside, we have plenty. We did get above 41.33 again. So it pushes resistance kind of now. We got up as high as, what do we get to? What did I say? 41.47. So we have that again, still around that 41.50 area. And then we have 41.51, which is a FIB resistance. Then we have 41.85. So this would be, again, wave five. We're thinking, what could wave five present to us? Well, we have 41.51, 41.85, 41.12. Then we get a little bit of 42, or 42.12, this is, excuse me. 42.41. Then we get a zone that it kind of comes into the 618. Again, now flipping back over to the other count that this is minor one and we're in minor two, that's major resistance for that. And that's at 
and we'll let it go up to 42.78. Now, if we're still in the fifth wave, now we need to allow four, and it still could be a minor wave two, or 100%, or wave five is equal to wave three, and that comes in at 43.28 to 43.36. So yes, these, these, they exist. I am not looking at it bullishly. I am not looking at it bearishly. I am only looking at the numbers, just like the guy at JP Morgan, that quant guy, what he was doing, he's just running his models and he just plugs in the numbers and hits the, hits the run button. And this is what it spits out and gave him every scenario to show that if the, the rest of the earnings are bad and even next quarter, doesn't show up as planned, we can still rally. It was an interesting statement. Um, so, and it's going to be the same story no matter if it finishes here, here, or here. When it's done, I believe that this is all going to come to a conclusion and it will be news driven. I think at this level, with this much bullishness hitting in, in and please don't take this the wrong way, a basically inexperienced market in terms of what do we do in a higher a higher interest rate atmosphere? What do we do going into a recession? What will the recession do? We haven't had one. And a lot of people have been in the market for the last two years, but even more have only been in the market since the 90s, the late 90s. The last time we had inflation and a recession, a steep one, and interest rates, it just kind of went through the roof, was in 1981. So, and it's so I'm not being, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but if there is enough to say of if all you know is buying and just sitting tight and letting it go up, well, you're going to be pretty glad that if you can get up higher, you're going to be more convinced that it's bullish. So, that whole attitude, because I think people are just desperate to get some of their money back, maybe they've held on through the whole decline thus far. And so they're, they'll, they'll chomp down on anything that says a bullish picture, whether it's truth or not, or fabricated or an extension of the truth, whatever. So I'm taking it day by day and just really trading the numbers. So trading price action against Elliott Fibonacci, and then I add to my day trading um, the order flow market profile. And taking a look, it's like, what is the order flow telling us? Are they buyers? Is the supply and demand sh uh, shifting to the buy side? Or is the supply and demand shifting to the sell side? That's how we base all the trades and we base everything pretty much during the day on that. And thus far, that continues to hold true and steady. So the ability to move in and out of the market and make some money is there. Not always as easy. No, I'm going to be truthful. Not always as easy. When the market is quick, it's herky, it's jerky. Uh, there are times you can get in and suddenly it just kind of flips and goes in the other direction more than you really want to hold on for. And then it flips and goes back. So it is kind of, you know, summertime trading. So if though, when the market reaches this completion point for either a minor wave two or an intermediate wave A, then we should have a very quick and uh, persistent decline, a drop. So that's why I think it will be news driven. Something will kind of come to the surface and it'll be a shock uh, to the market. It might be a shock to the world, might be a shock to the country, I don't know. But we have so many different hot spots within the economy, within the country, within all the different things that we're confronting uh, and then around the globe. So lots going on. But when that begins, I'm going to be looking for it to drop below and I'm going to start here on the four hour, the four hour 20, which is a 4081, and then quickly drop back below 4017. And then you'd be taking out the 50s, the EMA, the EMA and the SMA. And that they're both kind of sitting there right at 4021 and 4010. So that's a little bit of a zone. Then the 200s, the EMA sits at 39.40, and the SMA sits at 38.67. I expect all of those to be broken. If it happens in one day, it'll be quite the big move, and it'll be quite the shock. 
But we have seen where it's been like, we don't forget that off of that low, 36, 39, that's after seven weeks of seven weeks of down, seven down weeks. And so we've only really been going up since June the 17th. And we had a nice little slide back here. And we've had continuations of slide. But that's been really right here, mid-July, where we just started to pile in and ignore everything that was going on as we got into earnings season. So them's the numbers right now. And those are our possibilities. I fully expect one or the other. I continue because I'm leading this up to lean towards it being a minor two and we have a much stronger drop. So again, I will run both together, the minor two, and also the intermediate wave A as a part of a larger counter trend rally. And that would be a primary B wave. All right, I'm gonna leave it all right there. Our next update will be on Tuesday, August the 2nd.